been uh, moved from the site because the uh, environment was turning a bit hostile because we had some individuals from nowhere who were preventing us from speaking to the eyewitnesses around because we have been told by the eyewitnesses there that the three-story building structure was raised within two weeks. And I am able to tell you also that all the debris that were left in the place overnight after the huge building collapse have all been cleared from the site, even though the police had barricaded the area that no person should go within that particular space. We've been told by the eyewitnesses that three super trucks were actually there who worked overnight to take all the concrete materials from there and all of that. So it's been an active night, really stressful one for most of these workers over there. But then it was a tedious task yesterday for the Ghana National Fire Service, the Ghana Police Service and the NAVMO officials because they did not have the right equipment to be able to, you know, rescue an individual who was stuck under the rubble somewhere around 3.50 p.m. when the incident happened. It had to take uh, the member of parliament for the area, Francis Xavier Sosu, to call on individual benevolent to come to their aid. Um, lucky for them, they had an excavator later who was able to retrieve the body somewhere in the middle of the night. But unfortunately, the person was pronounced a dead. So this morning, we had uh, people from the Ghana Institute of Engineering who have actually come around to ascertain the situation. And I'm currently around the municipal assembly here with the team to get to speak to the assembly to know how they went about with the building of, of, of the of the three-story building structure, which unfortunately collapsed. Now, according to one of their rules, the Engineering Council Act 819 requires that all construction projects must be overseen by qualified and experienced and licensed professionals who have the knowledge and expertise to ensure that buildings are safe and structurally um, you know, sound. But you can clearly tell that these people did not go through that particular procedure. So I've been joined by David Petia Nyante. He is the executive director of the Ghana Institution of Engineering, who has actually been with me from the site through to um, the municipal assembly premises. So what have we, have we been able to pick so far? Well, uh, at the site that we were, we were not able to see any rubble or anything of the sort. The whole place had been cleared, and there was very few, to, few items there on the ground to see. So we followed up to the municipal assembly, be able to uh, talk to the engineers here, to find out what process they went through and whether they were even aware that any such building was coming up. But unfortunately, they are not available. So we still don't have answers to some of the questions we had for them. So what's the next action now? Uh, we'll continue to follow up and try and get uh, to the root cause of the situation. We'll see what measures they are putting in place. We want to know the particular process that project went through. And we'll, we'll, from there, we'll, we'll try and assess and be able to find out what, what happened. All right. So, Maui, uh, sorry, Martin. I just spoke to radio, that's why I'm mentioning my winner. We just spoke to engineer David Kotia Iante, who is the executive director for the Ghana Institution of Engineering. So just like I indicated earlier, we were at the Adenton Footbridge area where the incident happened, and it's actually not safe there because the person who was actually threatening and you know telling us to leave the premises, we have been told by some of the eyewitnesses as a land guard, and he mentioned that he's going to you know, bring some of his people along with him. So if we do not leave the premises, then mm. we might be in. So this is what is happening currently.